My name is Ronnell Chewy Coombs. I have a new masterpiece called Sometimes Women and Money Don't Mix. I know a thing or two about getting money. I went from being a street gangster to a business leader, and I've been making money all the way through. A lot of brothers as they age, they reach stalemate in whatever game they're in. When you get a little older and the money seems a little, little far-fetched and a little harder to grab, and you start looking for a lane, looking for a way, looking for the move, and you can't figure out why the money's not coming your way, I'll tell you a little secret that you know but don't want to deal with. Sometimes women and the money don't mix, and sometimes the women and the money do. And you really don't know the difference, and you're making a whole lot of bad decisions and bad judgments when it comes to these women. I know you don't want to hear it, I know you don't want to read it, but you better, because I got something to say to help you and strengthen your game. Sometimes women and money don't mix. That's my new masterpiece. It's on Amazon.com. Read it, debate it, study it, follow it, take it to the barbershop, put the fellows on. Sometimes women and money don't mix. It's available on Amazon. Get it. Hey, yo, congrats to the bro, Pat Poose. You heard for landing that executive position at TuneCore. It's a good time to be alive when these dudes start recognizing that we don't just make music. That we know this music. You heard? We need these positions. You heard? Pause. Let's hey, yo, it. shout out to the bro Tef, Asbury Park, Neptune, what's popping, Jersey, what's really good. You heard my bro putting numbers up on the shave room right now with them super bars. You heard? Go check them out now. Hey, yo, make sure y'all go to WayneFlame.com, Jersey, what's popping? Yeah, my bro, that jacket is flames. You heard? The whole Appreciate brand it. is flames. I'm fire. Yes, sir. Jersey in the building, Chang, Wayne Clay Productions. Like me and my brother got into the smack business by mistake. He was going to jail and gave us the phone. And this all happened on this phone. There was just so much smack money coming to the phone. We had no choice but to invest in it. I went on the run, on the run in 04 from the feds. I got locked up. The end, I went on the run May of 04, got locked up December 05 for the feds. What you, what you mean you went on a, this was your first federal charge? Yeah, it's my first federal case ever. And what you mean you went on the run? How you found out they was looking for you? Um, they had came, they had came and did a, um, they had already had came, we was under investigation for about five, six months. So the investigation probably would have lasted longer, but somehow somebody caught wind and the call went out. Yo, dump, yo, dump the phones. And when they when when they did that, that made them come scoop everybody up. So just what happened when they came to scoop everybody up, I wasn't at home. I was I was at a, I, was, I was with a, I was with this female I used to mess with from back in the day. I was at her house. So when I got the call, like yo, you be watching the news, I'm like nah. And like yo, the feds did, did it. Hey, they got they got they got. They got the big fella. So I'm like, what? Like, yeah, they got him, him, him. It was like, it was like so many people. This was over about 20 people, 20, 20 plus. You talking, about in, you talking about in Asbury? Yeah, in Asbury. That's a fact. Um, it was considered, see, this is the thing about it. I wasn't part of the organization, but due to my affiliation with my, with my family, it's going to look like it. You see what I'm saying? Like this, this was my family's organization. He was the head of the organization that he was in. It was called the Hype Gang. Well, it wasn't called the Hype Gang. That's what they dubbed it in the newspaper. But why they the called it part, that though? Because he had, he had, he had the town in the headlock for, for ten years. But that was his. But, but, but the Hype Gang. That was his name. That was his last name. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like so, for the most part, like he really was one of them arrogant hustlers. You see what I'm saying? Like he, he was, to me, <laughs> he the reason they came to get us. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like when you, when you, when the regular police pull you over and you tell the po regular police, like suck my dick, bitch, I'm rich. You can't do nothing to me. He was disrespectful like that. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? So it was inevitable that they was gonna come get him one way or another, but he had ducked so much shit already, like, one of his, but he had a spot, man. He could do every bit of twenty a day. They hit that motherfucker. There was some people in there, but ain't nobody. You know, nobody wasn't gonna get him up. Like he was, he fed the town. So with that being said, it's like you spitting in the police face. You see what I'm saying? Like they trying to put so much shit on boy, like they just couldn't get it to stick. 
but then you know when 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 that you, see this is how you know when when you look at certain eras like because this is like in between 2002 and 2005 like when like this is when the numbers to the two things is down you see what i'm saying so even though you might not be directly linked to bmf you're gonna be linked to niggas in jersey who linked to that shit, and you're gonna have everything that you need like we didn't have to cross the bridge to get nothing if you, if you get what I'm understanding, we ain't had to come to New York no more. Because it was really coming to the town and, and, and Cubs was plugged in. So, you know, being that the locals couldn't do nothing with them, they sent the boys after them. They sent the feds and that shit was, that shit, that shit was easy. They made light work of it. They came in, sent sales and all that shit, bro. You see what I'm saying? But just so when they came to get this nigga, they bumped into even niggas that were just affiliated, like myself, even though I was more than affiliated, it was like, oh shit, look at all this shit that's going on. But at the time, I, and I had said it one night to my brother, like, yo, bro, it's too much money floating around, man. Like, you don't, you don't think, like, the, the, the boys that's watching, like, ain't nobody begging. Like, this is unheard of in, 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 in any town in, across these ghettos. That niggas ain't begging. Motherfucker wasn't begging, bro. Like, it was just so much money coming and coming and coming and coming. Like, I watched niggas have overnight success in the early 2000s. Like, everybody, somebody, everybody had them things. Everybody had the numbers. You see what I'm saying? Like, the reason I got jammed up, I'm not going to say it solely because of my family, even though we had the numbers that I was looking for, and I would just really, let me get it for this, and I'll go knock it off for that. It wasn't like I was part of the organization. I was spending my money, but I was hustling. I was hustling that hair run, and I was just being greedy, lad. You see what I'm saying? Like between me and my brother, um, every two days we move a hundred bricks, and and it, for people like who only really know what a hundred bricks is in heroin, like we got we got fifty bags. We wrap all that up in one little thing, like a newspaper, and that's one brick. I was moving a hundred of them shit like every two days. This is how I came up. It wasn't the coke game that took me to the next level. It was like me and my brother got into the smack business by mistake. Like a motherfucker got, he was going to jail and gave us the phone. And this will happen on this phone. It was just so much smack money coming to the phone. We had no choice but to invest in it. And so that really kind of wasn't killing the, 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 the coke hustle we had. It was just like, yo, this shit is more, this shit take more more smarts to do but like you gotta be on top of this shit because at the end of the day you can get some garbage smack get stuck with it and then on top of that cause we serving off our phone we hustling off our phone still so we ain't outside on the corners so these white fiends that we got coming from other towns around in Asbury Park they spending straight money lad whereas me and my brother might pay 125 for a brick but we sell it to the white motherfuckers for 450 you see what I'm saying and I got 10, 15, 20 of those customers, maybe more on my phone. Not counting the, the black the black customers I got that that is just regular $10 a bag to that. Like they can get a whole bundle for 80, shit like that. So you gotta equate all that into it and then me selling weight to hustlers like, yo, I paid 125 for this, I can sell it for 250. We doing all of that. So then I remember the orders getting bigger, yo, we gotta get 300. Nigga, we'll buy 150 a nigga and give us 150. So, being that we had that going on, it was kind of easy for us to still do the coke thing because a nigga had a spot in the projects, the low rise projects called the Frederick Douglass. He like, yo, I'm about to go on vacation. Y'all can sit in here and get money. So, okay, so what we did was we sat in there, we was holding it down, but we bought, but I was getting money out with this shit called the Monroe Towers. And when he said we can get money right there, all I did was bring the money from the towers to the Frederick Douglass. And dude got, when he came back off vacation a week later, two weeks later, he seen all that traffic, he like, nah, y'all can keep this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he basically gave that shit to us. We like, yo, fuck it. It is what it is. So now we, it's a coke spot. We getting, we getting coke and we and we get into the money. So 
really for us to really get to the money, we call him Cuz, cause Cuz got it. You know what I'm saying? And so that right there is what really killed us. Like we wouldn't even have had that case had we not been fucking with Cuz, but we we had to fuck with him because we couldn't see ourselves fucking with nobody else. You see what I'm saying? Like nobody not gonna do you like your family gonna do you when it comes to doing business. Just so happened. He was under investigation last. You see what I'm saying? There <laughs> wasn't nothing we could do about it because we made phone calls. And not only that, we made phone calls, we family. So it's easy, it's easy to link because it ain't like we can't say we don't know him. At the end of the day, we know him. He, he, he family. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's just to the point where. It went to the point where ain't nothing we could do. We can't, we can't duck this. You see what I'm saying? So when they, when the feds come to get us, I was like one of the only dudes that wasn't around. There was a few of us that wasn't around, but I wasn't around. I was more, it was more of a, I right, we had catch up to him, I guess. But for the most part, nah, it took him almost two years to catch up to me. And the only reason I think they caught up to me is because I showed my hand. I came to Jersey, and I remember being downtown North, and, and, and one of my homies, I bumped into one of my homies. He like, yo, your name ring the bells in the hood, bro. You should, you should get up out of Jersey for a minute. And and I had only been in Jersey for a couple of days, because I was down south. You see where I'm at right now? I got ties down south, bro. And it, it was easy for me to get up and go. It wasn't even, a, it was never even an issue. You see what I'm saying? Like, so when the fans came, I was like, I'm out. Had a couple of dollars to my name, and I was like, I'm gonna push off for a little while. And then, in the mix of all that, in the mix of all that, I came back. I came back to Jersey. Like, you know, you get homesick, bro. I don't care what nobody say. You gonna, you gonna get homesick. And I was coming up, still hustling. I was still hustling. I just happened to be. In DC, you see what I'm saying? Like I had, a, I had a girlfriend. She lived out in Maryland. I bumped into some dudes down there. You know, they was good dudes, and so I was pretty much like, I'm gonna continue doing what I'm doing, even though I knew I shouldn't have been. But coming back and forth, he was under, he was under investigation, and somehow they got a picture of me and had a phone call. You see what I'm saying? When they went to the police station, I guess they they head were like, who's this guy right here in the picture with him? When they told over police, they're like, nah, y'all looking for this guy already. They like, what? Yeah, that's the dude C Devon. You know what I'm saying? Like this the dude C Devon. Pretty much all they did was track the phone calls. And then on some other shit, I got a phone call from one of my niggas in the county. That's when I should have knew it was over. Because he he didn't call my cell phone, he called the house phone, last. You see what I'm saying? Mm. He called, I'm not. And I'm like, and I'm saying to myself, like, yo, how you get this number? Like off the off the off the belly movie, like, how the fuck do you get this number? You know, way out Maryland, hey, I hadn't spoken to this nigga. And I don't know how long, lads. You see what I'm saying? I don't know how long I hadn't spoken to this nigga. But the only thing that I could say that I was like, oh, yo, damn, he used to fuck with Shorty best friend. So that's the only way I'm saying to myself, he could have got this number. But then then I'm saying to myself, then like everybody know my situation. Nobody knows I'm in DC, but maybe one or two of her friends. And I don't think she would have gave that information up like that because it's the feds. Motherfuckers know how serious the situation is. So with that being said, from the time that he called my house, Collect, and from the time I had been in Jersey, because it was around Thanksgiving, I went to Jersey for Thanksgiving. I was in North. I did Thanksgiving in North. Hollered at my folks, got some bread, got whatever I was going to get. Got the phone call that next week, which was like early December. I was locked up December 22nd, 2005, on my way to the feds. But we ain't transported back to Jersey so I could get indicted. Because, you know, they got to they gotta open that indictment by a certain time on it. You see what I'm saying? Like that indictment has to be opened up at a, at a, at a certain time. So um, that's how I got. I got a Baltimore number. 
So a lot of a lot of people don't know that. Like I don't have an 050 number for the feds. I got a Baltimore number because I got shuffled through through their system. Like I got locked up. DC with the DC jail. Um, DC jail ain't have no federal hold. Even though they go to the feds, they don't have a federal hold. I had to go to um had to go to Maryland. So they put me in this shit called the first thing you go into is this shit called DOC. It, it, I guess it, you can call it downtown Maryland. I'm not really familiar with it when you're on talking about Baltimore, downtown Baltimore, wherever the jail is at. And then from there, you might stay there a week or two, depending on how they quarantine you and shit. That shit ghetto as hell. Like them, like the bitches that work in there, like how you go and intake and they try to draw your blood and all that shit. This bitch was found like straight liquor because it was right after New Year. I told you I got locked up a couple days before Christmas. So I go to, I got shipped in to Baltimore around that time, New Year's. So you said the nurse yeah. broke the nurse chick was smelling like straight liquor. Liquor, straight liquor. So she thought yo, pull you, like she trying to wrap my arm with this shit, the little rubber shit that you wrapped your arm in. So I'm like yo, you not sticking me with that needle. She like what the fuck? I know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm like yo, you not sticking me with that needle. She like why not? I'm like yo, you smell like straight liquor. So the other girl came in there like oh shit. He, he, she like he like she like yo girl go lay down. He right. I'm like, yo, you not sticking me either because I don't know if she like, nah, I ain't go out last night. Ah, whatever the lingo she was trying to kick it to. I am like, look, y'all ain't going to kill me in this motherfucker. I'm already up against the wall in this bitch. I ain't from around here. So that, long story short, I get, I do that. I get the, I get the, um, the blood drawn, all that shit. Go through quarantine. From there, they got another jail you go to called Supermac. That's where all the, the federal inmates and all that shit go. So I'm a fed in me, I'm just on the run. I go over there. So now you gotta remember, it's Christmas time going into the, it's New Year's, all that shit. So I ain't going nowhere until after all this shit take place. So the only thing, this is why um I give, I give a lot of love to them Baltimore niggas because I'm not from around me. I get up there on one of them floors. I'm up there with some serious ass niggas. You know what I'm saying? They, I, niggas done heard stories about this nigga Itchy Man or um, Itchy from out of Baltimore that was having cops kidnap motherfuckers. I'm up there, a lot of good men. I ain't even gonna mention their names, a lot of good men, but one thing I one thing I respect about them, they ain't get on no bullshit with me. The niggas allowed me to use the phone, they fed me, all types of shit. And I remember that. My nigga eat money bags. I named him my nigga money bags and his brother. You know what I'm saying? Like these niggas had serious time. It was like young hitters for hire, young niggas. It was good men though. So me like me being in that jail opened my eyes. I was like, yo, they don't really hate niggas from up top. It's just how some niggas come into the jail and how they carry themselves. Some niggas is built to be goonies and they gotta come into the jail and put their feet down. I ain't never been one of them niggas, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm a real I'm a, I'm a G. Like I ain't like I always tell you, I ain't no sucker, but I ain't I ain't gonna fight no dumb fights. You see what I'm saying? Like, I ain't got to come in here and stab 80s niggas to these niggas respect me. Nigga, we gonna get into it. We gonna get it on. We gonna get it on. I had to go last and go. But I'm not about to come in here and try to put my feet down like I'm getting the phone. I'm doing... Nah, I ain't about to do none of that. I'm gonna play my part, but I ain't gonna get played out along the road, along the way. And any nigga that come on here from any one of these cities and I was in their jail, they gonna verify Like, nah, he wasn't on no sucker shit. I just ain't on no, I don't know how to go about being no goonie like that to take phones and shit, bro. I just know a nigga, if I'm on the phone, a nigga not take it. That's the bottom line of that. So now, I'm on the run. So now when I get shit there, when it's over, they ship me to Jersey. I got to go through Jersey because this is where I, my case at. <laughs> now, mind you, I've been on the run two years. Then in two years, this nobody should be nowhere around me. I should, I'm the last motherfucker, lad. So I thought. This is when I don't know. I didn't know about the feds that yo, a motherfucker who telling on you can't get sentenced until you until you take that plea. I ain't know that. You see what I'm saying? So now when I get to the county jail, this nigga's there. That shouldn't be there. You been in this motherfucker since 04, dog? It's 06. You see what I'm saying? But I still, I'm still, I'm still giving niggas the benefit of the doubt. Like, nah, he ain't, he ain't telling on me. Like, nah, what the fuck he gonna get for telling on me? I'm low man on the totem pole. 
yeah, I do my thing, but I ain't nobody. Like, I don't got the potential to be the next king of this town. I don't even want that headache. You see what I'm saying now, lads? So now I know niggas is telling. I knew niggas was telling, telling, but now you you got you get an idea of who telling on you. Then you starting to get your paperwork now. You starting to read through all this motherfucking transcripts, brother. My motion and all that shit, this bad shit was so thick. But it show all your, your co-defendants, how many motherfuckers on your case. It show all types of shit, your indictment. It show, it, 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 you know what I'm saying? And, and for for the most part, I mean, because I heard niggas on your on these platforms, you know, you are talking about, yo, know, they ain't go to no profit hearing. A lot of them niggas lying. Like, when they wake you up, they when they wake you up to go to no profit hearings, unless you got a paid attorney, because none of us ain't had paid attorneys, but a few of us, like, on some real shit, you don't even know you're going to a profit hearing. You think you're going to court. What is that? What'd you say? What is called? A profit hearing. It's like when... The feds come to see if you about to work with them or tell them to eat a dick. You see what I'm saying? Like, when they woke me up to go to court this one morning, it's like five, six in the morning, like, yo, yo, Collins, you got caught. All right, cool, you know, I'm thinking like, let's get this shit over with. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm thinking the ball rolling. I get them downstairs and shit. My lawyer come down there, which is a court appointed attorney for the feds. I ain't had no paid attorney. Um. The nigga, the, the white cracker come down there and be like, yo, they want to know if you going to rock with them. I'm like, what the fuck you talking about rock with them? They're like, they want some information. I'm like, what? I, I, y'all woke me up in this five o'clock this morning for this? They're like, yeah. So my lawyer like, look, this hear him out. Go upstairs and hear him out. I'm like, all right, cool, bet. So now when I get up there, you know, it's the two, it's the two, it's the two, I guess the agents that's on my case. And it's the DA. So when they get to explaining to me what I got going on in this case, they like, look, you've been charged with ordering this amount of drugs, and we got a couple motherfuckers saying that throughout Monmouth County and surrounding other towns, you've been doing this, this, and this. I said, all right, cool. So what's, what y'all want from me? They like, yo, we want this dude right here. I'm like, what? Y'all want who? We want, yeah, we want this dude right here. We want this dude. I don't want to give his name because he turned sour in the end. You see what I'm saying? I ain't even going to give him that respect, but they wanted him back then. You see what I'm saying? They wanted him back then, this dude I'm, I'm talking about. So I'm like, I don't know about all that. They're like, look, man, we got you dead to right. They go to tapes. They playing these tapes, you know what I'm saying? I'm hearing this shit. All right, they got me. But they ain't got this nigga. So I ain't about to fuck, I ain't got no reason to fuck this nigga over at all. You see what I'm saying? None whatsoever. So they step out like, look, we gonna let you talk to your attorney. So now, I'm like, all right, cool. And the mix of them let me talk to my attorney, I'm looking on the table. Cause they got so much paperwork and all this shit on the table, I wanna see what they really got. Now I found out who gave my name. See, motherfuckers got paperwork and these shits is blacked out. But the paperwork that I'm looking at in front of me don't got names blacked out. I'm looking at names and I'm floored like, yo, not these three motherfuckers right here. Not these niggas. Not these motherfuckers. Not, music not these niggas who's supposed to have my the same blood I got running through my veins. So I'm like, yo, all right, fuck. It. So now when they talk about the nigga that they want, which is my man at the time, I'm looking at, they got pictures of me and this nigga because at the time, he go with one girl and I go with her sister. So we like a family. You see what I'm saying? So they know I know him. Can't say I don't know him. Like, we like a family. But still in all, I ain't got nothing to do with what he got going on. I don't even know what he got going on because we don't do business together. I just know what he got going on. But it's not my business. So when they come back in, like, well, what you going to do? I said, look, man, I don't got nothing to do with that shit, but I will request a tuna fish sandwich and a soda and chips for being even over here for my lunch. They're like, oh, you think this shit a game? They're like, you think this shit a game? It's not no state case. I'm like, all right, what that got to do with anything? They're like, look, man, you looking at, if you go to trial and lose, you looking at roughly 40 years for this conspiracy. I'm like, what conspiracy are you talking about? You got a conspiracy with these dudes right here. 
But already I have been reading up on conspiracy last and I showed my hand too quick. I like conspiracy. I like y'all. I don't, I don't be putting my money with their money to see what we gonna come up with. That ain't no guy. That's a conspiracy. Hey like, man, that's a buyer seller agreement, if anything. This ain't shit. And I jumped the gun with that shit, man. I wasn't even supposed to say that, man. Like, I was supposed to do that at a later date and time. And being that I did that, they were like, all right, you ain't working with us. All right, beat it. They put me, they sent me back downstairs last. And I'm sitting down there waiting to go back to the county, which is in Monmouth County. I'm in Trenton right now. Yo, the van don't pull up at 7 that night. So mind y'all been up since 5 this morning. And I, I ain't leave here to 7 that night. And they sent me on my mama's mama. And I'm saying word is bond. They sent me a ham sandwich and chips and the watered down soda. <laughs> but not working with them. Yes. That's a fact. I ate the chips. I had, I had they, you know, they closed up some Lay's, some Lay's Plains chip. That's a fact. So when these dudes be getting on here saying they don't be going to them proper here, unless you got a paid attorney, you really don't know where you're going. You just think you're going to court. That's really nothing. But a lot of them dudes be holding that. They be hiding that proper hearing shit, knowing that they going to them proper hearing and say they went to court. And they don't be having no court date. Or they don't come back with anything. So all that took place. I ain't, I ain't work with the feds. I get, I'm in the range because I'm in category six, which is the last category. Being that I got this case, it dropped me down to a level 34. And I can't remember how many months that is, but you get a point off for not making them go to trial, and you get two points off for accepting responsibility for the shit that you did. Not for telling on nobody, but admitting what you did. So it knocked me down to a level 31, and I'm in category six. That's from 188. I remember this shit like it's yesterday because it's my case. From 188 to 235. 188 months to 235 months. My judge gave me the low end, which is 188 months, which equals out to 15 years, eight months. So now I get, you know, I get sentenced. My, you know, the bullshit. I be saying, you ain't working. Come back. They nail me to the cross. Hit me with 188 months. I was in the mind frame. I ain't the head of this case. I'm about to get 10 years. I'm going to do this little punk ass, ain't some change, and I'm gone. I got the most time on the case, lads. For me not to be the head of the case, you hear what I'm saying? 15 years, 8 months was the most time on the case. How many, people, how many people was on the case? Man, about 30 of us. Little, maybe a little more. I can't get all the numbers, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of it. Because it's like a fair list of gods. You see what I'm saying? This is what I'm trying to tell you before. Like, it, it's us. Everybody was like, G.O.D. that got caught up? The majority of us. The head of the case wasn't G.O.D. But he know the truth. Like he he know lessons. He wasn't G-O-D. But everybody up, basically up under that was. You see what I'm saying? If you go back and get the newspaper clipping, you're gonna be like, yeah, the, the guys ran the drug game. Ah, ah, ah. It's always been this way in Asbury Park, New Jersey. We ain't the first guys to get swept by the feds. You see what I'm saying? But when, when they come in, the, the guys is always the focal point. Like, because... It just just how it is in that town, the gods. It's just how it was. So now I get my time, my 188 months. You know, in the feds, the only I look at reception is being in MDC Brooklyn. You see what I'm saying? But this is the crazy part. Now we on our we downstairs train. We on our way. From what I'm understanding, right now, me and one of my coldest minutes, we supposed to be going to Farrington. So that's in Jersey. But when we get to the, we going to, we go, we had to, I think we went to Harrisburg. No, we ain't even making it. We went to this shit up state New York. I forgot the name of the airlift up New York. We went up there from Jersey. And when we get up there, it's a change of the program. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They saying, nah, something happened. Y'all gotta get, y'all getting rerouted. Y'all gotta go to MDC Brooklyn. But in the mix of us going to MDC Brooklyn, we bumping to another one of our co-defendants. So it's now it's three of us. He coming from he coming from one of them pins in in, in Virginia. 
I don't want. I don't know if it. I don't know if it's Hazleton. He coming from Hazleton. Me and my me and my other co defender. We coming from the county. So we don't really know how this fair shit go. So all we know is that if you on the pen, you ain't no snitch so far. We we don't know if snitches in the pen at the time. But we think like you on the USP, you can't be telling. You know what I'm saying? They gonna kill you. That's our that's our mind frame. That's only they motherfuckers been telling us. What you mean if they in what the court pen or? No, in the USP like like USP Hazleton, that's United States Penitentiary. That's level four. That's one of the big dog maxes. So. We got a code that's been coming from there. And if he coming from there, in my eyes, like, yo, he ain't, he ain't told on the case. You know what I'm saying? Because I know I ain't told. But I'm with a code of And when we get the, we on the bus together kicking it. Ha ha, keep, keep laughing and joking. Because, you know, we got stories. Like, we had, we really did it in the town together. We get to Brooklyn, them two niggas can't be together. So I'm trying to figure out, like, why y'all can't be together? Like, at the, at, and it's the crazy part about it, lads. These two, Dudes at the, like kind of at the top of the case. You see what I'm saying? Mm. And they can't, they can't be together. They, they can't be together. So I don't understand why not. Because my head, in my head, why y'all can't be together? So my co-defendant that I'm with, he like, yo, bro, I'm coming from the pen. No, I ain't no coming from these pens. You can't. And then he telling me what I already had thought I knew. So I'm like, all right, cool. So now we go upstairs. I don't know about the phone system. I'm trying to get him to make phone calls for me. He like, nah, bro. They'll take my phone for ah, ah, ah. I'm like, word. He like, yeah. You know what I can do, though? I'm going to tell my people to call your people. And when you finally get a pen number, you're going to have to do it like this. He said, but we, this is this like a reception, but like you ain't really going to get nothing popping here because we don't know how long we're going to be here. He was right. Two, three days later, we going. See, I don't know where I'm going. I think I'm still going to Farrington. So now they all call and we back downstairs. These niggas can't be together. They got my man who I'm going with in one tank. They got me and my man in the other tank. My man going to um, he going to McKean. That's way up. That's probably like one of the last jails in PA. He going out there by Ohio, but it's in PA though. So now when they take him and he shoot, they shoot him to McKean. Um. They let my man come into the to the pen where I'm at. And he like, yo, bruh, I think dude telling. I'm like, what? He like, yeah, like I ain't like, bruh, if I was telling, I wouldn't be around you. So now he got me with the mixed emotions now. You see what I'm saying? Cause I really don't know what's going on. So I'm like, yo, where we going? He like, I don't know that. And they call us for the bus, we'll figure this shit out. But we, right now, we don't even know if we going with each other. So when they call my name, they, I know they calling him not too far behind me, but they did. We going to USP Canaan. You know what I'm saying? Like, this shit is really off the chain. So, like, coming in, like, this was just crazy. Another thing, like, us leaving the county, I got all my paperwork with me. You see what I'm saying? Like, I get to Brooklyn, I had left it downstairs by mistake. The police come and get me. But my paperwork, like, yo, you got to be careful where you leave this shit at. I'm like, yo, why, wow, what's up? He's like, yo, motherfucker, to jump on your case, on your pill, to put a case on you. I'm like, oh, damn. Like, man, hold guard this with your life. I'm like, oh, shit. So I don't know niggas be jumping on niggas' cases in the feds yet in these little places like this. So now we get to Canaan. Like, I come with the paperwork. So, you know, in Canaan, in the USP, you don't, you don't, they don't run you right to the compound. You see what I'm saying? They put you back there in, 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 in the shoe. So now when you back there in the shoe, they come by your they come by your, your door. Now it could be two. It was like at, at on some G shit, it was three of us in the cell. They had one nigga sleeping on the floor. Me and my man had the beds, the two bunk beds. We had the bunk beds and the other nigga on the, was on the floor. He was doing the violation. He had been here already. He like, yo, where y'all from? He like Jersey. He like, nah, Jersey car thick out there. Y'all gonna be good. Alright, so we like, alright, straight. So they come to the door like, yo, Collins. I'm like, yo, what's up? They're like, yo, you ever work with the police on the federal investigation and all? I'm like, nah. Are you scared to go on the compound? I'm like, nah. Do you got, I'm like, they ask me a whole bunch of questions. I'm like, you know, it's all no to the bullshit. The other dude, they call it the, um, the dude that's doing the violation. He like, no, 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 I beg you. Like, oh, yeah, I don't remember you. Yeah, you just doing the violation. Yeah. They get to my man, yo, work with the feds. No. All that shit. No, 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 no. Okay. Boom, 
two days later, they kick us out on the compound. We got there Friday to kick us out Monday. So when I'm coming out, you no, know, they running lunch. So niggas like, yo, where y'all from? I'm like, yo, from? I'm like, yo, Jersey. So I hit my man on the comp, like, yo, Snoop, nigga from Jersey right here. So he, they, he's chilling this nigga, um, I forgot nigga from Jersey City, good nigga, turned Muslim, good nigga. They walk up on me like, yo, walk up on me and my man, like, where y'all from? Like, yo, we from Asbury Park, New Jersey. My man said, yo, I'm from Jersey City, but I'd be in Asbury. First strike that he got with me right now. You see what I'm saying? First strike. First strike. I'm, I, I'll let that one go. What you mean? Sure. Like, yo, like I told you before, when I'm behind the wall, even though I'm from North, I claim Asbury, bro. Who you That's said? You said I, your man said that? I be in- Yeah, he said, I'm from Jersey City, but I'll be in Asbury. Yo, I grew up with this nigga in Asbury. When I first moved to Asbury, he was living on the block I moved on. So he can't run that. But he he can run that 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 other town to these dudes that don't really know him. But I grew up with him. You see what I'm saying? So he can't run that Jersey City thing on me. It's cool, but it is what it is. I didn't really care. But so now he do that. They like, yo, what unit you going to? I'm like, I'm going to A1. They're like, oh, you going with us? We right here. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Boom. Um, they're like, where you going? They're like, yo, I'm he's like, I'm going to F something. Yeah, A, B, C, E. Yeah, he went to F. He went to F, he went to F2 or F1. Boom. So they like, yo, bro, they telling him, like, you gotta go over there. They showing where to go. He like, yeah, yeah. They like, yo, come on, we gotta run you on the unit real quick. Put your um, put your shit down, you know, you come eat lunch with us. You know what I'm saying? They, they go in there, the police like, yo, wait, what cell he going in so he can just throw stuff in the cell? You're like, yeah, he going to high, high, but I was going right by the door, 108, so would you come in? Just what happened, I moved into the room with one of the guards from Staten Island, to victory speed, Tyquell. No, Tyquell, to victory speed, a lot. That's my road dog. He was already out to lunch. So they like, yo, what you got with you? They, I, I got all my paperwork. They're like, what? I'm like, everything. They're like, I bet, put it all in the room, all that, we go to lunch, sit down, I get introduced to the niggas from around, the, like, the, from Jersey. Know what I'm saying? So now we eat lunch. Know what I'm saying? We go back to the unit, and I'm going. To, I'm in my. I'm going to my cell. Like niggas from Jersey coming to the um. That's on the unit. It's probably like eight or nine of us on the unit from Jersey alone. My nigga, my nigga Snoop. It was me, Jamaican, Jamaican dude from the shower posse from Trenton. Um, my old head Rashid from North. My old head Reggie Sharif from North. Like they, they, they welcomed me with open arms. And I had my paperwork. I had everything. I had everything. I had everything except a docket sheet. They be like, yo, you know, these um, PSIs could be duplicated. Like, niggas be having fake PSIs. But yo, we're going to show you how to get your, um, the JOC, which is your judgment of commitment, and the sentence and docket sheet. It showed every motion you ever filed. Every motion. Your docking sheet show every motion you ever filed. And for you to snitch or to try to cooperate, your your lawyer or your point of court lawyer got to file a 5K1 motion. And if you're trying to do that, 35 is a rule 36. Some shit like that. Rule 35 or rule 36, that motion got to be filed. That's when a nigga trying to hop on your case. Nigga trying to backdoor you. So if a nigga rule, it's either rule 35 or rule 36. But if a nigga do that, yeah, have a good PSI. It won't show that he snitched. But that docking sheet gonna show he snitched. Because he gotta file that motion. So I got that, and I had that within 30 days. So I got that. They like, yo, bro, you good. Your people's got paperwork? I said, that's something I gotta ask him about. What? We had, oh, let me go back. We had other co defendants on the compound. We had. It was me, the co-defendant I came there with, my nigga Gotti from Long Branch, uh, and another one of my co-defendants named Herc. Now, they asked about my man paperwork, but he on the whole never unit. I said, yo, y'all gotta ask him that. I don't know, I didn't ask him. Now, what we don't know is, later on that night, they go back, the police go back and get my man. They go back and get my man that I came there with and put him back in the shoe, lads. So I'm like, what the fuck that happened to my man? They're like, yo, they came and got your boy this morning or last night. So I'm like, all right, for what? They're like, we don't know. They just snatched him. 
So now, he back there in the shoot. I'm going on with my everyday life. You know, because I got to get acclimated to the jail. I got to get money. I got to get a phone list so I can get on this phone. I got to get the commissary. I got, you know what I'm saying? I'm meeting people, but I'm still, I'm still trying to navigate through this, this, you know what I'm saying? Niggas is telling me how the USP shit work. Like, yo, bro, we done seen your paperwork. Your doggy, you know what I'm saying? Your doggy sheet and all that shit is in route. We don't think you snitching. We, like, we know you ain't working with the police. Um, but there's rules of this shit. Like, this, this is our car, Jersey. Like, before you pop off with anybody from another city, Make sure you come holler at one of the bros first. Like at the time, the head of our car was Akbar Prey. And he's well renowned, well renowned throughout the fair prison system. Like he like he he really was that dude. Like he like like we had a problem, Nigga had a problem with us, they went to him. Then he come and, and, and figure out how this shit gonna go. Where you said he but from? He, he from North. You know what I'm saying? He had the car. Akbar Prey, like legendary out of North. Legendary out of New Jersey. He wrote a book. That name is a book. with something called Game Over, something like that. But he got a book. His family, his family, all they known for is getting money. The praise. That's they that was their thing. But he ran our car. So they started inquiring about my man paperwork. You see what I'm saying? But they coming to me about it. But mind you, he in the back. So he sent out a note. A nigga, a nigga from DC moved to my unit, like, yo, who CD? I'm like, yo, me. Like, yo, your man sent me a note for you from the back. So I'm reading it. He like, yo, tell that nigga Herc to go holler at the lieutenant and say, we ain't got no beef so I can come back on the compound. So when I get the kite, I run it down to my man unit because he on C2. So I'm like, I went out there like, yo, her, this is about right here. Like, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know what's up while me and him got steps. I'm like, y'all got steps. That, that means y'all can't be around. But when you got a big case, they don't want y'all around each other like that. Don't mean y'all y'all working with the feds or two. But sometimes they don't want y'all together like that because y'all got the potential to get money in the jail, too. And like, y'all got a potential to try to get some shit going on, being that y'all co-defendants. So they don't want that neither. But at this present time, that's not what it is. These two niggas can't get the, the, around each other because either both of y'all told or one of y'all told. And I don't know which one of y'all it is. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to go through this paperwork shit with these two niggas because I know these niggas from the town. I'm just hoping that they fix it before these other niggas in the car fi- try to fix it. You see what I'm saying? Because these other niggas in the car try to fix it, it can end up bad. Like one of the niggas could get stabbed up or, po- or possibly killed. We in the USP, mind you. Like motherfuckers don't motherfuckers don't take comedy to this snitching shit. So they go out somehow they work it out to let the dude back on the compound. So in order for you to get transferred from a USP to a low, bro, you gotta go to a medium. You gotta work your way down. You can't go from USP straight to a low. It's it's not, not it's unheard of. It's unheard of. It's just really unheard of. So now, they revving up on my other man about this paperwork. Somehow it, it's supposed to get back to him that I said something about some paperwork. So one day, I, I, don't, I don't gotta go to the mess hall, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm fresh in. I'm fresh in to doing the fair bit, so I got, you know, I got the money. So I'm on the unit. It's kind of it's kind of rainy out. But he's sending for some chips. Like, yo, tell CD to send me a couple of chips. He got some money too, so this is how we been getting down. So I'm like, I'm going to my room to get the chips. So I come out, he like, yo, bruh. Like, motherfuckers talking about you said I told. I'm like, nah, bro. But I told them niggas that they need to ask you if you told me. I don't know if you told. You never told me if you told. I'm under the pressure you didn't tell. He said, now nigga trying to get on some um, Martin Luther King. I said, oh, I ain't getting on no Martin Luther King shit. It is what it is. I said, but if you ain't told, then we ain't got to even be having this conversation. I got paperwork in there said I ain't tell. He's like, nah, it ain't even that serious scene because I thought we was family. I'm like, yeah, we is. That's why I told him to ask you so I ain't have to be involved with it like right now. Just so happened, he got transferred out before the shit could hit the fan. But them blood niggas was on his top because he was a banger. You see what I'm saying? Like, they, they, they was on, bro. I didn't try to get into who told on who and why they told. I just knew that it happened already. You know what I'm saying? I just didn't want this shit to fall in my lap. 
Like, yo, you protect the niggas who told. Nah, I'm not protecting these niggas that told. But I also know that this nigga ain't no sucker. I got to see him again on the streets. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to be like, yo, this ain't my business. But no, sometimes it don't work like that in the feds, lad. You can't just, sometimes you can't look the other way. I just didn't want this shit to fall back in my lap later. But my whole thing was this. Like anything that I could say to his face, I really could back it up. I just didn't want to, I just didn't want to get into that with these niggas, you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, either you told or you didn't told, they was going to find out. These niggas was going to find out eventually. I didn't have to worry about that part. I just didn't want them, I just didn't want these niggas to do them dirty. Like, I don't give a fuck what niggas say about niggas be telling all that it happened to them. Like, nah, bro, I know that nigga mother. You see what I'm saying? I know his whole family. I know his sisters. I know his aunts, his uncles, his cousins. Like, you like, yo, damn, bro, they killed bro down there. They killed cuz down there. Like, you, what happened? Like, I don't want to have to explain that shit 50 million different times. I don't want to do that. So, I'm trying to alleviate that type of shit. Like, nah, man, I don't think he told shit like that. I'm saying shit like that. Because I really don't care. It's just about me. I'm fresh in on the 16 year bid. I'm, I, right now, I'm telling you, it's 2000. At the time that I'm going, I got this going on, it's too early 2007. Only been locked up since the end of 05. But what you I only get, been what they, two years in. What they gave you that 16 for, just drugs or, I mean, other the, shit too? No, I had the drugs. Because at this time, the ratio is 100 to 1. For every gram of crack you got, it's a hundred grams of powder. Nah, they they was giving dudes too much time for that crack though. Niggas need to niggas need to be compensated for for doing yeah. all that unnecessary time just for some motherfucking baking soda mixed with some cocaine. That's just stupid. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? But this this how this how it was. So you did like sixteen it. just for the just for the just just for the sales of crack. Yeah. That's fucking crazy, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I did I did 13 and a half. No bodies, no guns, no nothing. You say you did 13? 13 and a half years. Of the 15 years, eight months. For no no type of violent nothing with your case? Nothing. That's fucking crazy. They got that shit is that shit right there, they did niggas filthy. They did black niggas filthy with that shit. Cause it ain't nothing but black motherfuckers who got caught up in them laws. Uh-huh. Nigga did. Right. That shit nuts.